Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to build 200 of your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for helping me get here. And if you haven't, it's not too late to join before episode 300. Maybe. To celebrate what I thought would be an impossible milestone to hit, we'll build a character that I thought would be impossible to make, the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. If I wanted to go the extra mile, I could just delete half my videos and make this episode 100, but the hardest choices require the strongest wills, and I have the will of a wet paper towel. So 200 it is. You should have gone for the head. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be perfectly balanced, as all things should be. I'll explain what I mean by that at the end of the build, but see if you can figure it out along the way. It's a fun little puzzle. Next, we'll get the tenacity of a titan, with endurance to push us through to watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. I misquoted this in the script originally and thought it was sunset, not sunrise, which means Thanos pulled a double shift. What a hero. And since I called him a hero, we don't have to give him hazard pay. Finally, we'll make sure that we're the ones with the stones to get things done with some snap decision making to make the gauntlet we endured worth it. Wait just a gosh darn jibbly bibbly minute, are you including the gauntlet in this build? Hey, it's Joe Crap from Joe Cat's YouTube channel. The Infinity Stones are MacGuffins, items for the players to quest for, not something that's actually built into the character, like it's some sort of weird colorful glowing acne that breaks out whenever you need to scare away the pretty cult members. That would be like if King Arthur had been using the Holy Grail as a bidet the whole time he was looking for it. I just don't think that people clicking on a Thanos video want a big angry purple guy with a big sword who punches things. Fine, I'll do it myself. Thanos is a big angry purple guy who punches things and has a big sword. There's always the tiefling if we want to literally be purple, but they don't have the thickness we're looking for, so we're gonna make him a half orc which makes even more sense if you're a basement dweller who cares about what happens in the original comic book. He's big and brawny, but also smart and scary. That means wisdom and dex are gonna be the dump stats. For levels, he's a champion fighter straight down the line with unarmed fighting and great weapon fighting for his sword that looks like the bastard offspring of Darth Maul and Cloud Strife. What is that sword? None other than the infamous Thanos Copter, but in this case we'll just settle for a great sword. Make the great sword even greater with the great weapon master feat, so that by the end of this you can spin the rudder around like a Beyblade with 16 D6 plus 120 damage two rounds in a row with action surge. Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip! Not to mention triple crit chance thanks to superior critical, a bonus action attack when you get a critical, and meteor crits as a half orc for extra, 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 extra damage! damage. <laughs> because fighters also get a snap's worth of ability score improvements, you'll have over 250 HP once you take the tough feat and recover HP whenever you drop below half health, so you won't die and hover around 50% of your HP. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. And now you know how to play Thanos, you're welcome. That was really comprehensive, and way faster than I do it. Thanks, Joe. I'm gonna do my version now, though, if you don't mind. Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Call me when you do long neck. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but I can't promise balance if you do. Intelligence will be number one. Stark is not the only one cursed with knowledge. Constitution next, you're a survivor, after all. Charisma after that, your pitch is come with me and we'll kill half the universe, and people actually sign up for it. Follow that up with strength, it'll get boosted with your titan qualities, but it shouldn't be too low if you're gonna square up with the Hulk. Wisdom is a bit low, you're pretty good at reading people, but not everything can be high, and we'll dump dexterity. Ideally, your perfect balance would come from 20 in every stat, but the MCU isn't anime, it's just a really long, interconnected story spread out over a bunch of series with filler arcs like Iron Man 2 and oh my god, it's basically anime. Loki is definitely the Sundere, and I know what that means because of how much anime you've made me watch. Thank you? I guess? For race, there isn't a titan race in D&D, but orcs are big, and you're technically a deviant eternal, so we'll go for a half-orc, which will give you plus two strength and plus one constitution. 60 feet of dark vision, relentless endurance to hit one HP instead of zero HP, maybe they should have gone for the head. Your savage attacks let you add another damage die to your critical hits with melee attacks, and you get the intimidation skill for free. For your background, we need to build our own for acrobatics and athletics. We won't be able to get physical skills from our class, even though we definitely need to rock your impressive physical Zeke. Even your chin has abs, I think. Those are abs, they're definitely something. Our starting class will actually be Wizard. Apologies to Joe, but we need Arcana and Insight proficiency, and this is the only way to get it. Not really, don't look that up. Wizards get cantrips, and I can't think of a better way to kick off our 200th character than with True Strike. It's a spell that lets your audience know how much you appreciate them. This really is the best job I've ever had. I get to talk about D&D and make stupid memes twice a week for thousands of people to enjoy. Thank you for that. It also gives you advantage on an attack roll next round, which is bad, just attack twice. 
Minor Illusion creates an illusion that fits into a five foot cube. It can be visual or audible. Get creative, but know that it's going to fail to hold up to physical inspection and can be seen through with an investigation check against your spell DC, which is eight plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier. Message lets you whisper a message directly into someone's mind if they're within 120 feet of you and they can even report back. With this, you can just send your kids to do stuff while you wait, I guess. Normally with wizards, we focus on the amount of spells you can prepare per long rest, but this is episode 200. This is the infinity gauntlet. We're doing every spell this time. First level wizards can have six spells of first level at first level. Charm person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature failing that they're charmed by you for an hour. Show them a cool dagger while your soldiers adjust the population of their homeworld. Silent image creates an illusion that fits into a 15 foot cube that can't make any sound, but since minor illusion doesn't require concentration, you can pair them to make reality whatever you want it to be in a 15 foot cube at least false life gives you a d4 plus four of temporary hp for an hour for a little pseudo soul boost burning hands creates a 15 foot cone of fire that deals 3d6 fire damage to creatures that feel a dexterity saving throw inside so you have the power to actually you know hurt people when you need to magic missile is a very consistent option firing three darts of force that deal 1d4 plus one force damage and each automatically hit as long as the creatures don't cast the shield spell but by the the end of this we'll be able to cut the shield in half so i wouldn't worry about that gauze fear forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature failing that they're frightened for up to a minute depending on your concentration hop in their head and let them know what it's like to lose turns the legs to jelly you also could use the reality stone to literally turn their legs into jelly but then you've got to pick a flavor and it becomes a whole thing second level wizards can choose a school but you can skip all that to be a war mage which gives you tactical wit so you can add your intelligence modifier to your initiative rolls which will help balance out the low dexterity you can also use arc deflection to add two to your ac or four to a saving throw as a reaction as long as you don't mind casting nothing but cantrips until the end of your next turn this almost kind of sort of gives you proficiency with all saving throws kind of for this level spell long strider will increase your movement speed by 10 feet for an hour with no concentration making you a little bit better than the people you're fighting and feather fall reduces falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction including but not limited to ebony maw corvus glaive Proxima Midnight, Habeas Corpus, and yourself. Just not Gamora. You sort of need her to take the falling damage for the team. That team being the universe. Third level wizards can learn second level spells like Misty Step to warp 30 feet as a bonus action if you got what you came for and you need to bail. Lingering goodbyes are a luxury of those without purpose and Minnesotans. If you're ever trying to leave a party in Minnesota, do it an hour before you actually want to. Suggestion is like charm person, but for eight hours and for one specific non-harmful task, as long as your concentration lasts. Aim for the head would be a good suggestion, but probably not a good one for you to suggest to someone else. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement. Bump your charisma and your dexterity. They're not quite as balanced as I'd like them to be at this point. For this level's spell, hold person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration, though they can re-roll the saving throw on their turns. Humanoid covers pretty much the entire Avengers roster with one raccoony exception. And not to dunk on Rocket, but I'm pretty sure you can handle him without this. Detect thoughts lets you read surface level thoughts of one creature in a 30 foot radius. You you can probe deeper with a failed wisdom saving throw on their end and even use this to find invisible creatures but sue storm isn't in the mcu at the same time you are so you'll probably just use it to figure out which avenger hates diagonally sliced sandwiches you know the useful stuff you can also scoop up another cantrip like toll the dead forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature failing that they take a d8 of necrotic damage or a d12 of necrotic damage if they're below their hit point total have the soul stone just sort of round them a little bit closer to death's door i'd call that mercy fifth level wizards can learn third level spells and we can use the time stone to go fast with the haste spell doubling your movement speed adding two to your ac giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action once per turn you can use for an attack dash disengage dodge hide or object using action it lasts for a minute depending on your concentration and can really help you get things done in a snap Poor choice of words slow lets you slow things down for creatures in a 40 foot cube giving them disadvantage on dexterity saving throws having their movement speed giving them a negative two penalty to their ac they can only take an action or bonus action on their turns and if they cast a spell that takes an action you get to roll a d20 on an 11 or higher they cast it next turn instead if they can't cast it too bad no spell wasted slot this works on up to six creatures so iron man spider man ant man rock man guts man and electro man i don't know what those last three were i just know we still haven't made builds from that series. 
6th level War Mages get Power Surge, which lets you add half your wizard level in force damage to the damage of a spell cast that damages a creature an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. But at the start of the day, you're only going to have one and can gain more by shutting down spells with Counterspell or Dispel Magic. So let's grab Counterspell to shut down spells of 3rd level or lower automatically as a reaction and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level so you can just absorb Iron Man's missile or turn Doctor Strange's mirror image into a solo image. I think people forget they can use this on any spell. It doesn't have to be one that deals damage. For your other spell, Thunder Step lets you add some damage to your teleportations, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures within 10 feet of you, dealing 3d10 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much on a success. Before that happens though, you and a willing buddy teleport somewhere up to 90 feet away. Generally, you don't actually care about your children or soldiers, but it could be strategically valuable if you just kept them alive, or at least it didn't rain down fire on top of them. You do you though, I guess. If you want to teleport further, it's good that 7th level wizards can learn 4th level spells because Dimension Door lets you teleport up to 500 feet away with a buddy. Not even Quicksilver could catch up to you because he's dead. Banishment forces a charisma saving throw on a creature, failing that they go away for a minute, either hanging out in a harmless demi-plane inside the soul stone or in whatever plane they were originally from. If you hold concentration, they'll stay there in their home plane or bamf back to where they were if they actually are from around here. Send that as guardian back to the Bifrost, he seems really mad at you. Just because you killed his brother? What's the big deal? You've killed a lot of people's brothers. 8th level wizards get another ability score improvement or a feat. I'd go for the resilient feat, adding 1 to an ability score and giving you proficiency with saving throws of that ability score. So I'd go for dexterity because fireballs and lightning bolts are some favorites of the Avengers. For this level spell, locate creature lets you find a creature you know of within a thousand feet of you and if it's moving you know what direction it's moving in. You could also find a specific kind of creature if you don't know their name. I think the wizard was named Mr. Doctor? That's strange, but who are you to judge? Phantasmal Killer summons an image of a creature's worst fear that fails a wisdom saving throw. They take 4d10 psychic damage every turn until they can pass. I'm not sure how reasonable corporate tax rates would attack Tony Stark, but that's your DM's job to figure out. Ninth level wizards can learn 5th level spells. Legend lore curses you with knowledge, letting you know about a person, place, or thing of legendary significance. The more you already know about something, the more you learn, so this will help you figure out what the soul stone actually does. They never really clarify. Dominate person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they follow your orders for a minute and you can take direct control with an action on your turn. They reroll the saving throw when they take damage, but if you'll remember, the main trinity of Avengers all dumped wisdom in my builds. So we'll finally get to see the Avengers fight, other than when they fought in Civil War, and Age of Ultron, and the first Avengers movie. Okay, so they fight in literally every movie they're in together, beating them might not be that hard. 10th level War Mages get Durable Magic, giving you a plus two bonus to your AC and saving throws while you concentrate on a spell, including concentration saves on that spell that you're concentrating on. With how many buffing spells we have on this build, you really should be concentrating 24-7. For this level spell, Hold Monster is like Hold Person without the humanoid restriction, so even Devil Dinosaur won't be a threat. Devil Dinosaur, of course, being the T-Rex best friend of Moon Girl, a super genius who swaps brains with the T-Rex. Don't worry, people. There's still plenty more movies for Marvel to make after Endgame, and they're going to be weird. Contact Other Plane lets you talk to someone in another plane who will answer your five questions with a yes or no answer as long as you make the DC-15 intelligence saving throw to not go insane. If that happens, you take 66 psychic damage, you can't take actions, understand people, read or speak coherently until you take a long rest. You might also think that death is a tangible woman who would date you if you just killed half the universe. That sounds weird though. I'd revise that backstory to make it more marketable to a general audience. You also get one last cantrip. Prestidigitation does like a bunch of different stuff. You can make things warmer, colder, cleaner, dirtier, smell good, smell bad. You can make tiny objects. It's basically the tiniest reality gem effects you can think of. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Disintegrate forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 10d6 plus 40 force damage. If that drops them to zero, they turn into dust. Now we just need to find a way to multicast this 5 trillion times should be pretty easy. Mass suggestion is like suggestion, but it's for 12 creatures, it lasts 24 hours, and doesn't require your concentration. So you can get Star-Lord, Drax, Rocket, Groot, Venusaur, Rattata, Fearow, Pidgey, Ponyta, Vaporeon, Polyrath, Butterfree! Gotta charm them all, gotta charm them all.
I don't know what happened there. 12th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Intelligence and constitution are both really important to wizards, making your saves harder to resist and helping you maintain your concentration. For this level spell, let's get the Thanos is good at fighting spell, Tensor's Transformation, giving you 50 temporary HP, advantage on weapon attacks, an extra 2d12 force damage when you hit someone with a weapon attack, proficiency with all weapons and armor, strength and constitution saving throws, and two attacks per action. Honestly, this basically just turns you into an Eldritch Knight that can still cast higher level spells. It's insanely good. It lasts for 10 minutes depending on your concentration, and when it ends, you have to make a DC 15 constitution save or suffer a level of exhaustion. You wipe out half of Asgard, kill your daughter, fight a squad of Avengers, teleport to Earth, fight another squad of Avengers, then snap all in the same day. Probably going to take a bit out of you, honestly. But... Fortune favors the bold, and Fortune's favor gives a creature a d20 to roll for one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw sometime in the next hour, or you can use it on someone trying to attack you to give them disadvantage. It's basically a luck die, though you can manipulate time, so it's not really luck. 13th level wizards can cast 7th level spells. Plane Shift lets you and 8 members of the Black Order take a field trip to another plane, or you could send someone else there after you hit them with a melee spell attack and they fail a charisma saving throw. After you've got all the infinity gems, there's no real reason for you to stick around. Mirage Arcane changes a 1 mile of terrain into an illusory different type of terrain. And by illusory, I mean visually, audibly, olfactory, and tangibly. It doesn't say anything about taste, so I think it has to taste different, otherwise it's not actually an illusion it's just actually warping reality and it lasts for 10 days so that's nice 14th level wizards get deflecting shroud dealing half your wizard level in force damage to up to three creatures when you use your arcane deflection which technically doesn't have a limit on uses so absorb energy with the gauntlet and toss it back out maybe as bats. I feel like force damage is deliberately vague, flavor stuff for more fun with it. For this level spell, telekinesis lets you lift objects weighing a thousand pounds or less with your brain. And if that object is a person, they can resist with a strength check contested with your spell casting ability. You can move this thing 30 feet as an action for 10 minutes depending on your concentration and switch things without dropping concentration. We won't be able to lift quite as well as I'd like to with our arms, but this should cover most things. The shield spell adds five to your AC as a reaction, which is slightly better than arcane deflection but if you're low on hp you might want to push it up a little bit nobody else is going to be finishing your work you're the only one who can do it and probably the only one who wants to 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. Feeble Mind deals 4d6 psychic damage and forces an intelligence saving throw on a creature. Failing that, their intelligence and charisma scores drop to 1. They can't cast spells or communicate and can really just identify their friends and protect them. Or at least they can try to. I don't really know how useful Doctor Strange is going to be without spells. Reality Break forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they can't take reactions and have to roll a d10 at the start of each of their turns. If they roll a 1 or a 2, they take 6d12 psychic damage damage and are stunned until the end of their next turn. On a 3 through 5, they make a dexterity saving throw, taking 8d12 force damage on a failed save. On a 6 through 8, they're warped 30 feet away and take 10d12 force damage and are knocked prone. And on a 9 through 10, they take 10d12 cold damage and they're blinded until the end of their next turn. If you can make reality, you can break reality. And if you break someone's reality, I'd imagine that hurts. 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement or feat. The tough feat gives you 2 HP for every level you have and every level you get. Wizard hit die are just bad, so this will balance it out a little bit. For this level spell, Far Step lets you teleport 60 feet as a bonus action every round for up to a minute depending on your concentration. But if you hit the space gem too many times in a row, it might activate sticky keys, so I'd watch out for that. Dominate Monster is like Dominate Person without the humanoid restriction, so finally you have something to handle the raccoon. That was the only method they had of beating you. 17th level wizards can learn 9th level spells, and Wish is really the only conceivable way to do the snap, because it lets you do anything. Of course, your DM can do some monkeys pawing to you based off of what you wish for. So, word it carefully, otherwise, I wish 50% of the life in the universe stopped existing could just kill a bunch of bugs. Which actually sounds great. If your wish is for anything that isn't the effect of a spell of 8th level or lower, it is going to hurt. Every spell you cast after this of 1st level or higher deals 1d10 necrotic damage per spell level to you. Your strength drops to 3 for 2d4 days, though you can take 2 days off the recovery time by just doing light activity, like 
gardening. There's also a one in three chance you'll never be able to cast Wish again. So get your snap off, recover a bit, and then break it so nobody can ever wish again. It's like the opposite of wishing for infinite wishes. Unfortunately, casting Wish means you won't be able to cast other ninth level spells that day, like Meteor Swarm, which forces a dexterity saving throw on four 40 foot radius spheres, dealing 20d6 fire and 20d6 bludgeoning damage to creatures inside that fail. When you're done, half of the universe will still be alive. Seems weird that half of the universe has evasion, though. 18th level wizards get spell mastery, letting you cast a first level and second level spell at will like a cantrip. For the first level spell, maybe Featherfall, never taking falling damage would be pretty cool. For the second level spell, I'd go for Detect Thoughts. You never know when mind reading is going to come in handy. For this level spell, Power Word Pain automatically hits a creature with 100 HP or less. This reduces their speed to 10 feet, gives them disadvantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and all saving throws except for Constitution, which is lucky for them because they have to roll a Constitution saving throw if they want to cast a spell without just wasting a slot. And they get to make a Constitution save to remove these effects. For your other spell, Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and determine what type of magic caused them, so you'll be better at sniffing out our sneaky little sorcerers and their timey-wimey stones. 19th level wizards get another ability score improvement or a feat, raise your strength and charisma to stay balanced, but also to get 15 strength to wear heavy armor without the penalty. For this level spell, Teleport takes you and 8 members of your family literally anywhere on the same plane, but depending on your level of familiarity, you could miss the target. You should be fine as long as nobody lied to you, you didn't teach each Gamora dishonesty, so it should be fine. Contingency lets you cast a spell of 5th level or lower with this 6th level spell to store it and activate sometime in the next 10 days based on an event you determine. How about a dimension door after you snap? Could be nice if you have an axe in your chest. Our capstone is going to be the first level of Bard. I'm just kidding. It's wizard level 20 for signature spells. These are two third level spells that you can cast once per day without expending a spell slot. I'd go for Counterspell and Thunderstep, maybe, in case you need to make a getaway. Honestly, it's worse than just two third level slots, but hey, you also get two more spells. Maze sends a creature to a Labyrinthian Demiplane until it can make a DC 20 intelligence check with its action or you drop concentration on it for 10 minutes. Keep in mind, Minotaurs automatically succeed, so be glad that Beta Ray Bill isn't in the mix just yet. I really feel like there's only one spell that can cap off a build powerful enough to break the universe in half. Something to take full advantage of the Infinity Gauntlet and the power of the cosmos. Something to triple our jump distance for a minute. It's the jump spell, baby! If you want to get in the comments and tell me that making the jump spell the capstone of this is taking everything from you, just remember, I don't even know who you are. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how balanced this build is. First, you have one skill proficiency from each ability score with athletics, acrobatics, arcana, insight, and intimidation, making your talents very even. Speaking of ability scores, they're symmetrical if you used book scores with 14, 10, 16, 16, 10, 14, moving down the sheet, while still being accurate to how Thanos would be distributed. Finally, you've got eight spells from each Infinity Stone, with Wish being the odd one out using all of them, which still makes for a perfectly balanced list. But is the balance good? Well, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, Wish. Wish is the best spell in the game, and it even says that at the start of the spell description. Next, you're a 20th level wizard with all of the spells that entails. 49 options to do whatever you need. Finally, if you get sick of playing wizard, Tensor's Transformation just turns you into a good melee fighter, so you can switch it up if you want to. For weaknesses, Concentration. Holy heck, I'm not sure we've ever had a list with so many Concentration spells. If you took a shot of water for every time I said Concentration in this video, you'd be putting Jodoro's Aura Counter to shame. I actually didn't double check that, but you can. Watching another video and commenting on it would be great for the algorithm. You're also a jack of all trades, but a master of none, with plus three as your highest modifier. Finally, your spell D DC is actually kind of low, so people might be avoiding the things you cast with relative ease. Honestly, like Superman, this is a hard build to fit into 20 levels. Joe Crap's Thanos feels just as accurate as the Gauntlet Thanos, so the real Thanos should be some combination of the two. But since we need 17 levels of Wizard to get Wish, I think that the only accurate way to make this feel like Thanos would be to make a level 40 character. Now that would be an Avengers level threat. Actually, it doesn't have calligraphy, this build sucks. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make 200 videos every two years. If you want to see a level 40 character in action, come back on Saturday and we'll see what it looks like taking on a squad of Avengers. Also, special thanks to Joe Cat for joining me in this video. Go subscribe to his channel. He makes great D&D stuff.